Good day, everyone. This video is a how-to really for myself because I saw this on LinkedIn, but it's ArcGIS for Microsoft Office, and especially I saw a posting using it in Excel, so I wanted to see how you can get this add-in and open it in Excel. So I Googled ArcGIS for Excel. The first pop-up that took me to was Esri's page outlining how to do this. So I'm going to go through the similar steps. Uh, this is my second go about of trying to download it on this computer. I'm going to do it a different way than opening the store itself because it goes, it tells you ahead of time, just open the store, download it, and you're good to go. I did that, but the add-in wouldn't open properly for me. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and open Microsoft Excel and just do an add-in from there and see if that works a little better. But as Excel opens, you can see here kind of the nice, cool features that it has that you can get into it just by visually looking at it. You're still using your spreadsheet behind it with location information or data behind it. You can just generate and use different maps for it. They have a nice case study example using Vancouver data. So I'll post this link to it within the video itself. And you can see what else ArcGIS is doing with some other Microsoft products itself did miss out on the user conference this past week uh, so I was hoping to see a bit more of this in person but there's always next year so again how it works following these steps what you can do the big part is you need to have an Azure ArcGIS uh, account already set up I have one through the University of Arkansas so I can log in through that and connect it that way I'm going to go ahead and open up a firearms data set for Little Rock for calendar year of 2021 you can see in front of you offense description, weapon type. Remember, for Little Rock, they use Nibers data, so you have different offense codes, which lets you capture and categorize weapons in different capacities, so you have different types of firearms themselves. We have incident location, city, state, zip, along with our latitude and longitude. And incident status means if there's an arrest made or where it sits exceptionally cleared. Even if there's a juvenile arrest versus adult, different codes in here that give us that information. So cool. We have Excel open. And now we want to get into having ArcGIS connected to it. So when I was playing around earlier, I was kind of clicking around and seeing where I could do the add-in for it. But not surprisingly, I ended up getting into my add-ins and get add-ins as a whole. So with that, I just went into the store. I typed in ArcGIS and it pops up. So if I go ahead and click on it, it's actually going to bring up. It's an Esri product and kind of a quick reminder of what all it has going on, what it can do, and what you need for it support-wise. Uh, if you go into the Microsoft Store on your actual computer, it has a bit more description to it, but you're in a good place. I'm going to go ahead and hit Add, hit Continue. So that's going to get going for me. You can see down here it's loading my add-in at the bottom. And now I have a new ribbon at the top that allows me to use ArcGIS. So you can see here I have location information, so I'm in a good place. I've gone over in other videos how to use 3D map, and you can use this based on the latitude and longitude, even the address or other aggregate units based on Microsoft Bean. It connects to that and we'll use it. It actually tells you how much of the percent that we're able to geocode or match, so it's pretty handy that way. If you're not used to it, check out one of my older videos or shoot me an email. I have no problem making another one for that. If you have larger aggregate data, be it state level, county, country, you can use your fillable maps. With that, the filled maps is a feature that's available across PC and Mac. The 3D part is PC only. Ran into this issue a couple times when teaching when students have a lot of MacBooks. All right, so if I come over to ArcGIS, you can see now I want to show a map. So I'm just going to truly highlight my data set. I just get in the habit of doing that control shift down arrow right and I want to show a map with this I'm assuming it's going to make me log in again first time really doing this you can see it has this reminds me of old school uh, Microsoft Word Excel with Clippy the clip art kind of thing but let's go ahead and get started with this so I have an enterprise Is it? I'm going to hit pause here just because I need to look up the full URL for my license. All right, there we go. Have the full part. Go ahead and do sign in. And it's probably going to ask me to do my organizational. Ah, uh, that's what I did. I just clicked it backwards. So sign in online. UA Geosciences. Remember. I'll have to log in with my University of Arkansas affiliation unless it's already connected, which it looks like it is. So very cool. So I'm going to pull this 
over. Can I double click and take it out of that pane? Got it. Move. Ah, cool. So I just hit move and it lets me take it out from the pane on the side and have a separate map for it. So this is interesting to look at. So we have our data itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add our data table. And it, when I did that, it picked it up as latitude and longitude for the coordinates itself and match pretty similar to the display XY data that you have within ArcGIS specifically. I'm going to hit add map. And it should zoom in to Little Rock, of course. We always have some outside of Little Rock itself. But not shockingly, these are the coordinates to firearm incidents for 2021 calendar year in Little Rock, Arkansas. So I'm just going to click around a little bit to see what we have in here. Some visualization tools, I imagine. Um, some measure itself. Input buffer drive time. Infographics, so you can start to create some other line, underlying population. I'm wondering if we can do this at smaller units of analysis when I say that. Um, I mean, that's the United States. Um, I was thinking since it's tracked neighborhood level itself versus United States as a whole. If it's anything like the other one, so I can add in the imagery. So this is similar to what we had in Excel in terms of if I zoom in what you can see. If I were to zoom in with some of the imagery itself, I'm very familiar with I-630, how it was built to segregate. This is our river market downtown area where a lot of the bars are located. Um, you can only switch back to the other streets and see where they're coming back to. And you can see that depending on the when the data were geocoded by the city of Little Rock, you have some that are to street center line, some that are parcel matched, and some are even at intersections, which are not shockingly a little problematic, but not too surprising. And then you can also add in data from, if you have ArcGIS online, what's stored in there. I have a Fayetteville, Arkansas file in there. I don't need to bring it in. This one would just be the boundary districts for that specific one. So it's pretty cool to see what I have available in my online account. I can bring into here and make a map with that. So that's pretty handy, pretty simple. I'm not doing anything crazy at this point. I kind of wanted to get a feel for what's possible in it. Drive time, distance, walking time. And I've messed with this a couple different ways, but I've never been able to mess with walking, driving time while in here. Always use Google for that. And of course, you can create a shareable map, class I used to teach, but if you want to do content, everyone public, you can end up putting everything you need in here to make a finished polished map. A very cool feature, quick video. I'm honestly just clicking around here at the end to see what all I can bring in. Again, this one is just the layer file in the back is uh, the actual spreadsheet of firearm incidents, mapping the XY data and making it a lot easier for us. We do have options in here to make other types of uh, displays. That's just my old picture, but I will be interested to see what all and get into if there's any other outside of measurement and some of the hot spot stuff that I can get into and looking at. And I imagine once you link it to more of your online account and files itself, you can start to fill this in similar to the uh, specialty units that you can bring in for Microsoft Excel already. But it's a nice handy tool to where if you have it built in and you want to kind of look between layers and have it just linked for it, it's an easy ribbon to add. It took less than a minute to get it all installed and going. I did do it within Excel versus doing the Microsoft Store. That's the only thing I would mention there, the only big change from that. Other than that, it's a pretty cool little feature table that I'm a fan of. I did not know they were doing this much in between the programs itself. But other than that, it'll take some clicking around and getting used to, but I think it's a phenomenal little crossover between Esri and Microsoft, and I'm looking forward, especially with the Power BI and everything else they have going on, what all we can do with this going forward. Any quick questions, anything like that, reach out, but I'll probably have more videos on this in the future, but it's an easy way to get this integrated for your own use. Cheers. Till next time.